Okay. So as this goes on, we're going to get more in depth with After Effects, but I want to be more familiar as animators in Cinema 4D, and then using After Effects as the sort of finishing tool, the finishing touches on all the stuff we're putting together. You can do all sorts of animation in After Effects itself, but right now we're just focusing on one program at a time. So applications, After Effects, and there's two apps. There's the Render Engine and the regular After Effects app. You can open that one up. And you'll get an, a tip of the day when you open it up. You can just close that out. And the After Effects interface is similar to what goes on in Cinema 4D. We're going to have our essentially sa stage area, our timeline area. And then the list of objects in our project in Cinema 4D defaults to the right-hand side. In After Effects, it's on the left-hand side. And so over here, we don't have any assets in our project yet. And so let's fix that. Once you have After Effects open, you can go to File, Import, File. And I'm going to bring in those two movies I made. So I've got uh, this cube and cylinder. You should be able to shift click or command click both of those so you can bring them in at the same time. And once you open them, you'll see that they appear over here on the left hand side in your list of things in your project. And so essentially you've brought in both movies and both movies are rendered at with the animation codec so we're working at high quality here. We haven't compressed anything yet. We've got that done. Now we need the basic After Effects comp or composition. This is the name for the sort of smallest, uh, think of a comp as being one discrete timeline. And so we can come up to composition, new composition, or just command N. And that'll bring up a dialog box with some settings. And some of these settings should start to look familiar. And so let's call this comp um, combined project. You're going to want to set the width and the height to 640 by 360 if they're not already set. You want to set the frame rate, of course, to 24. Resolution should be at full. And this start time code and duration, duration is in um, minutes, seconds, frames, and 30 seconds is fine. You want to default to having a little too much room, so you've got room to move things around. And so I've got 30 seconds, that'll be fine. You want to click OK. If I zoom back out, you'll see we've got a blank stage area, and we've got a timeline down here, and we're making progress. So how do I get my movies on there? Drag and drop. So I can get both of these, shift click, and drag them down to the timeline area. And we'll see that they both appear on the timeline. In After Effects, they're both represented by these blocks. And so this represents the length of the movie itself, which looks right because we had zero seconds, two seconds, four seconds, and both movies that we made were three seconds, right? Right in between two and four. So we're good. And so I've got both of them set up here. And they're in layers. If I were to switch the order, that switches which one's on top, just like in Photoshop, just like Photoshop. So think of After Effects as moving Photoshop. Again, I can switch them, and I got one on top of the other. But I don't want them on top of each other. I want to be able to sequence them, right? I want to see one movie and then the other movie. So there's a bunch of ways to go about this. But one of the slickest tricks here, and this is, comes in handy, especially if you're going to have more than two. Let's say you've got like seven clips you want to put in order. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shift click to get both of them. I'm going to right click on them. 
And just like any other program, when you right click in After Effects, it brings up a contextual menu. There's lots of options here. We don't need to get into all of these right now. But under Keyframe Assistant, there's one that says Sequence Layers. And if you select that, you'll get another drop up or pop up box. We can just say OK. And it will automatically slide them so they're right up against each other. If I were to scrub the timeline now, I see that I get one movie, then the other movie. The order of them doesn't matter so much here right now. But this, they have one, then the other. And this will sequence them seamlessly so there's no gap in between the two clips. So you got one clip and then the other clip. In After Effects, you most of the time you want to look at part of the timeline, not the whole timeline. And in order to focus on a single part of the timeline or render out a single part of the timeline, you need to control what they call in After Effects the work area. And the work area is going to be this sub timeline. We sort of have a representation of the main timeline up here. This is the work area. And the shortcuts for setting the beginning and the end of the work area are easy to remember. It's B for beginning and end, N, the letter N, as in no for end. Uh, they're right next to each other on the keyboard. And so I don't need to set the beginning because it's already set. I'm going to slide my playhead over to the end of the movie. And I'm going to hit N. And you'll see that the end of the work area now snaps to where the playhead is. If I were to hit the space bar to play, it'll now loop the work area of the movie. So we'll see our actual movie, our six seconds of footage repeating itself. Now one of the um, most useful parameters of Photoshop is the idea you can work in layers and that you can apply effects to many layers simultaneously. And you can do that in Photoshop with an adjustment layer. And you can do the same thing in After Effects. And so you could put one filter on multiple layers. You can also put filters on individual layers. But I'm going to go ahead and rewind here. And in the blank space in the timeline, I'm going to go ahead and right click and go to New Adjustment Layer. And you'll see that the adjustment layer extends the entire length of the composition. But that's fine, because it's, it's kind of a blank, transparent layer right now. It's going to affect everything that is below it on the list of layers. So both of our movies are below it, and that's good. There are a lot of effects in After Effects, hence the name. So rather than go through a list of all of them here, we're going to just put some time code on our movie, which is something we're going to have to do in all of our animatics and cameramatics going forward, uh, so that we know what happens at what frame, and so that when you're discussing it with other animators, you can say, OK, what happened at frame 32 I didn't like, but at frame 68 I think that was good. So it's the best way of describing where you are in time. And so if you come over to the right-hand side, you see that there's an effects list, and this is searchable. And so if I just search for time, We'll have some stuff come up. Now, it's important that I have my adjustment layer selected, not either of the other layers, because when you double click an effect, it's going to go on to whichever layer you have selected. And so I have my adjustment layer selected. I've searched for time. And under text, there's a time code box. And I'm going to double click that. And you'll see that we'll get a time code readout. On the upper left-hand corner of the time code readout is a little uh, target. And you can drag that to reposition this. Once you add that time code, over here under Display Format, there's some options. And so we have minutes, seconds, frames, or just frame numbers. 
or if it's actual film, you can work in feet and frames. Um, for right now, let's leave it at SMPTE. So it's minutes, seconds, frames. And so the last number won't be going from 0 to 100. It'll be going from 0 to 23. Great. So I've got both my movies sequenced. I've got time code on there so I can see what's going on. Another example here from a compositing standpoint is let's say we want to adjust the levels of this movie. I'm going to go ahead and put in levels. And we get a whole bunch of stuff coming back. Again, I'm making sure I have my adjustment layer selected. I can put multiple uh, effects on a layer. And so I'm going to go to, let's just go to the second one under color correction, levels. I'm going to double click. And you'll see that in the list of effects over here, I have time code, then levels. I want to adjust my image, but I don't want it to affect the time code readout. And so I'm going to keep the time code on top of that because they execute sequentially. And so I can adjust the level slightly if I wanted to bring up the, it's a little dark. I want to bring up that part of it, slide this that way. These histograms are just like the interface in Photoshop. And so I'm going to sort of compress this a bit and then bring up the black level just slightly. And since it's on the adjustment layer, it affects both of our movies below that adjustment layer. So very, very simple color correction. You'll hear the term color correction a lot when, especially in movie making, it's the final step, kind of the polishing of the look of the film. In our case, we're polishing the look of the outputted render. Outputted? That's not a word. Of the render. Super. Now we're ready to render this movie. In After Effects, we got to come over here to Composition. And there's a list or queue of things to render. And so we're going to go to Composition, Add to Render Queue. Once you do that, you'll see that the render queue is now taking the place of where the timeline was. They're just in separate tabs. And so here's the render queue tab. Here's the timeline tab. It's still there. So I rendered something earlier. I'm going to get rid of that. This is my recent render queue. And in the render queue, this is similar to Cinema 4D. We're going to go to the output module. Now this is a bit confusing. You can click on this arrow and there's some options, or if you click on the yellow word, you get the pop-up dialog box. And I'm going to do that so I get the dialog box. In the dialog box, we have, again, some things that we should be getting familiar with at this point. We want to be making a quick time movie, so that's good. And then over here under format is where we can change the codec. Now, this is the final step in our workflow, right? And so we are publishing to uh, send to the internet. And so now we don't want to make a large file. We want to make a smaller size compressed file. And in that case, we're not going to use the animation codec. We're going to use H.264. I'll leave the quality cranked up for now because this is a pretty short movie. I'm going to click OK. The other thing to be aware of that we're not going to deal with right now is that in this window is where you would turn on the audio output. If this box is not checked, your movie will not have sound. That's fine for now because this movie doesn't have sound, but later when your movies do have sound, you'll want to make sure this is checked. I'm going to click OK. The output two is exactly what you would think. Again, don't press the arrow, press the yellow word, and we get the finder list of where to put this thing. I'm just going to put it on the desktop. I'm going to put it uh, final distribution. Farina. 
and save. Now again, you have not made a movie yet. You just told After Effects where you, and how you want to make the movie. And then the render button in After Effects is over here on the right hand side and it says render. And once we click that, we'll see it slowly chug through all the frames. It'll do